Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2016-2017 Teacher Workshop Series. Today we're doing number 12 on the new General Curriculum Math Subtest. This is a nice problem out there for elementary and middle school teachers. It incorporates ideas in number sense and algebra. So it's some good stuff going on here. I'll start by reading it over. It says, if M and N are both prime numbers greater than 2, the number represented by m times n plus 1 must be, and we have our options here. Now, uh, read this to yourself. It's not that long. Pause the video, read it to yourself. You'll notice we do have a lot of number sense vocabulary here, like prime numbers, even numbers, odd numbers, another repetition of prime, and perfect squares. You'll, you'll even notice that the word number is repeated a second time. So this is definitely a number sense question. You really see that number sense being drilled in. Well, there's other aspects of this too. There's a little algebra going on. Like whenever you see these variables, m and n, or you see expressions like this one right here, this expression reads whatever it, it reads, m times n. There's an implied multiplication there, plus 1. And this word represent, oh, that's also another algebra word. Whenever we have expressions, we're always looking to see what does the expression represent? Okay, so there's a lot of math in here. Sometimes it's nice to review what each one of these are. Like an even number, it's any number divisible by 2. Like 2, 4, 6, 16, 22. All divisible by 2. That's an even number. An odd number, any number that's not divisible by 2, like 1, 3, and 5. When I say not divisible, I mean if you divide it by 2, you get some sort of remainder. So these odd numbers don't work. Prime number. Well, prime number appears here and here, so it's probably really important. So let's just write down a few, like uh, uh, 2, 3, 5. I'll write them up here. 2, 3, 5. And perfect square, let's just do the first few. 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, and so on and so on. All right, so we've got the number sense review out of the way. Now let's solve this. We're told that m and n are both prime numbers greater than 2. So we're not going to use 2. So let's test out what happens with 3 and 5. If I do 3 times 5, we get 15, and 15 plus 1 gets 16. Is that right? Now 16 is even, but it's also a perfect square. So what would we have to do? We'd have to test out another combination, because it says must be true. And must be, it must be is code for it has to work 100% of the time. So if we test it out again, what's another prime number? 7. Well, let's see what happens. 3 times 7 plus 1. 3 times 7 is 21 plus 1 is 22. Is 22 a perfect square? No, it's not. So it's not a perfect square. Big frowny face there. It's an even number. And so if we were just using just pure substitution of prime numbers outside of 2, eventually we would come up with um, A as being the correct answer. Is that the only way to solve this? No, because we're going to go back to numbers and number sense for a moment. M and N are prime numbers greater than 2. 2 is the only even prime number, general number sense knowledge, which means 3 and 5 and 7 and 11 and so on and so on are all odd, which means M and N are going to be two odd numbers. And an odd times an odd always gets you an odd number. Is that right? And an odd number plus 1 always gets you an even value. And that's really the general number sense stuff that they want you to know. Team, this is a fun problem. It reviews some of this core number sense knowledge. It gives you a little practice with, you know, evaluating algebraic expressions. It has you remember stuff about prime numbers and it, it's a good problem to study, okay? All right, A is the answer. This is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Have a great day, team. Take care. Bye-bye.
Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2016 Teacher Workshop Series. This year, Go Academy is holding a whole new round of workshops in math, science, English and history, early childhood education, foundations of reading, ESL and SEI. These are hands-on workshops designed to help teachers pass their teacher certification exams. I encourage you to check out an upcoming workshop. We're holding them in Massachusetts, New York, North Carolina, Florida, California, New Hampshire, Vermont, and a couple other states. Check out our workshop. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care.